Hey guys, it's Lauren with Discoverable Bay. And as you can see, I'm still in Australia. If you haven't heard, I have decided to move here and I'm still getting settled in, so that's why things look a little bit different. Now today, I wanted to talk about the five little things that you might be doing that are severely hurting your playing. Now I know at any given point when you're playing bass or just music in general, there are thousands upon thousands of things to keep in mind. But these things, once you're aware of them, are really easy to fix and make a huge impact in your playing. So let's get started. Number one is playing with collapsed fingers. Now I know a lot of you have heard me nag incessantly about playing with curved fingers as opposed to collapsed fingers, because it's important. When you play with collapsed fingers, there's a lot that's going on that's really not doing you any favors and can actually harm you and your playing. So if you're up in thumb position, the actual motion that you're doing when you're collapsing your fingers is your finger is hitting the string and then it's collapsing backwards. So you've got this double motion going on, which is slowing you down. But then also, you're not able to be as accurate because when you put your finger down in a specific spot, that backwards motion puts your finger in a different spot on the string altogether. And you can actually move a little bit when that motion happens, that double motion. So you're not able to be as accurate and it slows you down because you're playing with the pads of your fingers rather than the tips of your fingers. It's a bigger space, more fleshy, and sometimes people will use this part of the finger to do some vibrato because it gets this big, wide vibrato sound, but when you're moving quickly, it really slows you down. And then on top of that, especially in these positions down in first position, half position, if you play with collapsed fingers like this, more often than not, you're going to be squeezing with the fingers rather than using the natural arm weight because of this awkward shape that your fingers are taking. And when you're squeezing, not only does that put added pressure on your fingers and in your wrist, but again, slows you down. So when you're practicing, practicing this on your own, when you're working on curving your fingers rather than collapsing them, focus on playing on the tips of your fingers. When you curve your fingers, that's the part of the finger that you're using, is the tip of your finger. When you're collapsing them, you're using the pads of your fingers. So if you find that you're using more of the pad, more of the fleshy part of the finger, then just try to use the tips of your fingers and actually watch and make sure that your fingers are curving nicely. Okay, number two is improper bow placement. And this is more prevalent when you're up in thumb position, but it also happens when you're in the lower positions down in first and half position too. But generally, as you get higher up on the string, the bow should move closer to the bridge. And that just helps because as you're moving up higher, the string essentially becomes shorter. So you have to adjust by moving further away from the hand. And when you do this, that helps the notes just really, really pop out, especially when you get higher up into thumb position. Um, and then when you're playing actual harmonics all the way up here, or even false harmonics down here, that bow placement is crucial just because of that high pitch. But if you're in the lower positions or in thumb position, no matter where you are, if your bow placement is too high, which generally that's the issue, is bow placement that's too high away from the bridge, that is more than likely what's causing your squeezing, or not your squeezing, your squeaking, and your fuzzy tone. If the bow is all the way up here, it's almost impossible to get a crisp, clear tone. And when you're pressing down and you're actually digging in the string when you're above the fingerboard, that's gonna cause a lot of squeaks and a lot of scratches. Now, number three is squeezing with the left hand. We talked about this a little bit when you're collapsing your fingers, and that does happen, but sometimes people that have a beautiful finger shape can also be squeezing. And generally, that comes from the thumb. If you're in, the, in first position down here and you're squeezing with the left hand, that's typically because you're actually squeezing and using the force of the thumb to press the strings down, rather than using the weight in your arm to pull the string backwards like this. Now I know that's a little bit difficult of a technique to grasp at first, but once you get the hang of it and you force yourself to stop squeezing and just using the arm weight, then you'll get the hang of it. And if you squeeze too much, again, I know I talked about this already, but that just slows you down and it causes, it causes unnecessary tension. Uh, now, number four is pressing with the bow arm. When you're pressing, you're actually using the force of your arm and your muscles to tense and press into the string. What I always tell my students, and I always tell all of you, is to use the weight in your arm. 
to let the bow sink into the string. And what you want to think about is keeping your arm in a relaxed form. So hold your arm to where it's just slightly bent at the elbow and relax as many muscles as you can, as you can while keeping the arm, the upper arm, about a 45 degree angle away from your body and then just relax the arm into the string. Let the bow sink into the string like this. You'll know if you're pressing, if you feel your arm tensing and you get an inconsistent squeaky, almost thin sound, okay? And to practice this, just to add on, I would practice long tones and sit in front of a mirror and watch and see if your arm is tensing. Just do long tones and monitor that way. Listen and also watch at the same time. Now number five, which is also the final thing that you wanna keep in mind, is lifting your fingers in a shift. And it's not just your fingers, it's also your whole hand. When you're shifting, you wanna keep one finger, no matter which one it is, usually it's your first or your thumb, depending on where you are. You wanna keep that planted as you shift. A lot of times I see people and they do these big shifts where they actually pick up the hand and move it. And of course, this is incredibly exaggerated. I've never seen anybody legit do this, but the idea is the same. If you're actually lifting your fingers up to jump to the next note, that string is coming off of the board. And aside from it making it incredibly difficult to be accurate, that also isn't great for the tone quality, especially if you're slurring. If you're lifting your fingers up in the middle of a slur with the bow, then that's gonna cause a squeak and it's gonna cause a little bit of a break in the sound. So when you're shifting, make sure you're keeping your finger planted, either your thumb or your first finger, whatever fingers are on the board, and lead with the fingers while they're on the board. And all of these things connect, right? So it's gonna be a lot easier if you curve your fingers in that shift and aim for that high note that way. So I hope that that helped. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the section below. And if you enjoyed this lesson and you would like to learn more from me, please check out my newly released full-length thumb position course available exclusively on discoverdoublebase.com. Otherwise, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.